Trialize the linear model can model the non-linear relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variable. The idea behind the generalized linear model is trying to transfer the variable, make it ready in the linear model. So here, let's take a look at how we generalize the generalized linear model. In the generalized linear model, it includes the three steps. Here, this slide shows the setting of the generalized linear model. It includes the three main steps. The first step is trying to transfer the dependent variable, transfer the mean of the dependent variable. And the second step is trying to make the transfer the dependent variable into the linear model and make it and use the linear regression model to estimate the parameters and find the model parameters that can yield the best fit of the dependent variable y to the data sets. And the third step, you try to get the value of the dependent variable through inversing the transfer dependent variable. In those step, we call the transfer dependent variable is linear predictor. And why we call it linear predictor? Because later on, we will use the linear predictor into the linear model. We call the transforming function linear link function. Here we use the g to show the link function. And we use the inverse of the link function to get the dependent variable. Let's think about here we have a dependent variable x1, x2, x3, x5. Based on the independent variable, we try to project the, project the value of the dependent variable. Here, the first step, we try to transfer the dependent variable. Because the dependent variable has a certain distribution, this distribution will introduce the randomness for this model. To deal with the randomness, we take the mean of the dependent variable and transfer it to the linear predictor. We use the link function g to transfer the mean of the dependent variable to the linear predictor. We use eta to represent a linear predictor. So eta is a linear predictor of the mean of the dependent variable. This is the first step. Right now, let's take a look at the second step. For the second step, so we use it eta, the linear predictor, to generate generalize a linear model. It can be used to model the relationship between the linear predictor eta and the independent variable x1, x2, x3, etc. So we try to use the dependent independent variables to predict dependent variable y. And the eta here, the eta here acts as intermediate for this system. After we use the linear predictor, the relationship between the independent variable and the eta is a linear. Eta is equal to the linear composition of the independent variable x1, x2, x3, etc. We need to clarify that the transformation function, the link function, is not linear. The mean of the dependent variable and the linear predictor, eta, is not linear related. Which means the mean of the dependent variable and the independent variable are not linear related with each other. After we got the linear model, we try to find the parameter beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. Those parameters will provide the best fit for the model, linear model, and the, to yield the best fit for the dependent variable y. You may notice here we don't have the error term in this linear model. Why? Because the error term is represented by the dependent variable. In this model, 
we only use the mean of the dependent variable. So because right now we didn't include the variance, so we don't have the randomness coming from the dependent variable. So that's why we don't have the error term. Now let's take a look at the third step. In the third step, we will try to get the mean of the dependent variable. How we do this? We use the transformation function we used before. So we can use the inverse of the link function to find the transfer transferred dependent variable. Here we will be the mean of the dependent variable. So let's take a look at the components of the generalized linear model. It has the dependent variable. This dependent variable has a certain distribution, like a normal distribution, gamma distribution, etc. We tried to use a linear predictor. This linear predictor will be the will be the transform transferred value of the dependent variable based on the link function. The linear predictor is the linear combination of the dependent variable, independent variables. So you can see we use eta. The eta is the linear combination of those independent variables. And later on, we try to find the relationship between the mean of the dependent variable and the linear predictor. So we use the inverse of the link function to find the mean of the dependent variable. Then we can generalize the range between the dependent variable and the independent variable through the linear predictor. This is how we use a generalized linear model to predict or to modelize a nonlinear relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. Because the two variables they are not linear related to each other. So we use a like a use a bridge, use a linear predictor to generate a bridge between those variables. And then we can find a relationship between them. For this model, we use the same method we used before in the linear regression model. So we try to minimize the sum of minimize the error. Try to minimize the errors. We sum the square of the error and minimize those errors. Here in this table, I show some typical distribution of the dependent variable and its corresponding link functions. You can see the first columns is show the possible value that the dependent variable can take and the corresponding distribution of the dependent variable. The last three columns is show the link function and the, the inverse of the link function. For example, if the dependent variable can take all the real value, so the Dependent variable is satisfied the normal distribution. So we can use a link function, it's called identity. So we use the identity link function, which means linear predictor will equal to the mean of the dependent variable. And the inverse of the link function will be equal to the eta. It's a linear predictor. If the dependent variable only take those positive value, so which means we can use the gamma. So the gamma will be the distribution of the dependent variable. In those cases, we can use the link function called inverse. Okay, the link function, the eta, can use the inverse link function. So the linear predictor will be eta will be equal to the inverse of the mean of the dependent variable and the inverse of the link function is inverse will be so the mean will be equal to the mean of the dependent variable will equal to the inverse of the eta. If the 
dependent variable only can take those integer like the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So which means the dependent variable have the distribution, binomial distribution. And in those cases, we can take the logit. We can use the logit link function. In our lecture, I will introduce the first two. So when the, when the dependent variable can take the real value or the pos only to take the positive value. When the dependent variable take the integer value like the 0, 1, 2, 3, we have the Jose Isa. He will introduce how to use the logistic regression and how to use the logistic regression to use the risk control assessment. Uh, here we have the dependent variable. It's normal distributed with some variance. So in this case, so we can use the identity link function. The linear indicator will be equal to the mean of the dependent variable. And the inverse of the mm, the inverse of the linear regression, the linear indicator will be the eta. You can know because it's it's itself the value, right? So we can say the mean of the y will be equal to the linear predictor eta. And linear predictor eta is a linear combination of those independent variables. So it's almost an alternative formulation for the linear regression model, right? So this one is pretty easy to use. Let's take a look at another one. So when the y only take those positive values or positive real value, so y satisfy the gamma distribution. And in this case, if the variance increase proportionally to the mean, so we need to use the inverse function. So the inverse function is defined as the linear predictor equal to the inverse of the mean of the dependent variable. So which means, and we know if we want to get the dependent, the mean of the dependent variable, it will be the inverse of the link function. And the inverse of the link function will be the inverse of the eta, right? So we have the mean of the dependent variable equal to the inverse of eta. Okay, so it, the eta will be the linear combination of all the independent variable. So here we can get this model. Okay, the mean of the dependent variable will equal to the inverse of the linear predictor. And because the linear predictor is a linear combination of the independent variable, the inverse of the eta will be equal to the inverse of the linear combination of all the independent variable. This variable is very useful when we try to predict a positive value. And uh, those value that varies more with a large value, like the amount of the sales. For the logistic regression, it's very useful when we have the dependent variable only take several states like yes or no, truth of horse, or low, medium, high for the risk. Low risk, medium risk, high risk. So we can use the logistic regression to predict whether a transaction is regular or not based on the past information or past transaction data sets. For logistic regression, we have the Hussein Isa. He will introduce the logistic regression and how to use the logistic regression in the risk control assessment.